Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you for this great turnout. I never expected this many people for a class on nude selfies. So, <laughs> thank you. This is great. This is, I have some really exciting stuff to show you. Um, so what we're actually doing is uh, we are doing our portrait photography effects. So I'm gonna be doing a little retouching. I'm gonna show you some things that I do uh, on finishing moves on all of my images. I have certain things that you, know, you just kinda of do when you get to the end of the portrait. We're gonna do a little retouching. We're gonna do effects. We're just gonna do a whole bunch of stuff. We'll never fit it in the hour that we're going to do, but we'll get as many of them as we can. Uh, it's, it's a lot of Photoshop. It's not a lot of Lightroom. There's some Lightroom. Uh, there's some stuff you can do in either Lightroom or Camera Raw. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Lightroom and Camera Raw are the same thing, written by the same guy, using the same math and the same sliders in the same order. Uh, so it's the same thing. So whether you use Photoshop as your main gig, who, who does use Photoshop as your main thing, like that's your thing? Okay, so you'll do, if you see me do something in Lightroom, you'll be able to do the exact same thing in Camera Raw. It is literally the same, written by the same guy. Uh, all right, so let's start off with, with this one. This is an effect that I use a lot. Um, it, is, it is an effect. And so you, you can see I kind of overlit this shot. Um, you can see the, the flash just kind of going all over the place. And it's just, uh, I didn't feather it. I didn't do a bunch of stuff I should have done because of the drinking. So, um, <laughs> so what we're going to do is, now I know that this morning uh, Christy Shirk did a whole thing on all the new Lightroom masking tools which the masking stuff is amazing. Christie's amazing, put them together, it's a magical unicorn. But, um, so we're gonna use a little bit of the masking stuff. I'm not gonna go any, anywhere the detail that she did, but this first one is one that I was doing even before all the really cool new masking stuff. And it is, how would I make this more dramatic in 30 seconds? Like, how would I make it a lot more interesting and dramatic? And uh, you're gonna click on the masking tool and grab the masking tool. And the one you're gonna get is the radial gradient. So it really just draws a circle or an oval, it's a circle if you hold the shift key, it's an oval any other way. And I'm just gonna drag out an oval over her. Now, if I were to go and grab any of the sliders, it's gonna make everything inside that circle go dark. So if I wanna make it darker, she's gonna be darker. So what we wanna do is we wanna go to the invert button, this little checkbox here. Now in camera raw, instead of putting a checkbox and saying invert, they just put a little square that's half black and half white because they figure it's fun to change things between two programs that are exactly the same. So, so just hit invert. So now, anything that I do with the sliders is gonna affect everything but her, right? So it's everything but her. So now, I just go to the exposure slider and drag it down, and it's like I did a better job with the lighting. <laughs> so now I can say, well, I want the light source to come a little more like it really was over this way. So you can just move your cursor right outside the little thing and just move it around. So you can just make the whole scene a lot more dramatic very easily. You can decide how dark or how bright you want the background. But here's what's nice about this. And this is why it's nice to do it like the end. Because when you do it this way, you're not brightening her. Her exposure is exactly the same as it was. We're darkening everything else. Because if you just put an oval on her and brighten her, then her exposure's messed up. But the exposure set, I kind of do this at the very end so I get everything else looking okay and any retouching or whatever. And then you've got this little thing that you can pop in here. And you can decide if you want it to be really tight or really, oh, I didn't mean to move the uh, feather amount. Uh, you can decide if you want, because where the center is is its brightest part. So you can kind of, if you wanted to have some fall off so it's not lighting the bouquet, or if you want to light the bouquet, it's just very flexible and it's like a 30 second effect. So. So that's that one, and again, you can do the same exact thing in Camera Raw, it looks, works all the same way. All right, so that's one thing. Let's move on to another thing. Let me go, let me get out of this here. Go to this guy. Looks pretty happy. Looks kind of Fabio-like, right? <laughs> He's smiling, living his best life. The only thing is, is that's not how he looked in the studio. First off, he wasn't in black and white. No, no, but this isn't how the shot looked at all. He looked a lot more serious, like this. There is a filter inside of Photoshop that makes him smile. It doesn't just make him smile, it adds teeth. I'm not kidding, I'm not, it's an AI powered, so look, there he is with teeth. Now. There's one weird thing about this. There's, there is a weird thing about this. See, it looks okay now, but if you go back and forth, you're like, 
yeah, that guy's kind of messed up. But, um, <laughs> but he looked okay at first. Like, you didn't know. You thought, like, he looks okay. And then you see the other one, you're like, I like him better without the smile. However, but there's one weird thing about it. You have to, for this particular thing, you have to be connected to the Internet because it sends the change to the cloud. It stays up there for three or four seconds and then comes back down. So uh, I have, for some reason, disconnected from the Internet. So let's see if it gets me back on the New Yorker guest. And if not, I have, I have a plan B, which is New Yorker guests with plural. No, it's uh, I'll <laughs> connect to my phone here. We'll just connect to my phone because uh, the New Yorker guest isn't making it all the way in here. And for those of you who are watching at home, the password for the New Yorker guest. <laughs> no, don't do that. Hang on. Oh, now it wants my password. We're not putting that in. Why is it asking for my password? I was like, I was just connected a few minutes ago down in the, in the restaurant, uh, the TikTok restaurant, by the way, open 24 hours right here at the New Yorker Hotel. Uh, let's see. Okay, all right, it linked up. All right, so to get to this, you had to jump over to Photoshop, so let's just jump over there. Uh, on, in Lightroom, you press Command-E on a Macintosh or Control-E on Windows, and it takes your photo over to Photoshop, as you can see here, where it's done nothing absolutely at all. Why didn't it go over to Photoshop? Here's Photoshop. He's not there. Let's try again. Command-E. Oh, there we go. That's better. And let's just see. We'll take them over there. So these filters are called the neural filters. You go under the filter menu under right there at the top, neural filters, and it brings up a whole window. Now, these filters are, a lot of them are not done yet, so this is kind of almost like an incubator where Adobe's trying new technology. So you notice that some of them say beta, and what that really means is these aren't very good. <laughs> They're going to get better, but right now just try them and let us know what you think. So the one for him is called Smart Portrait. You go to Smart Portrait, you have to turn it on, and it says this needs the cloud, right? And then look, there's a happiness slider. <laughs> and the further you drag it, the happier he gets. So let's just go over here. I'll take it over to 25. Give it a second. See, it says processing. See the bottom of the screen? It says processing in the cloud. So it takes a minute. And it would, it's going to take just longer just because of, it's my phone instead of my, my Wi-Fi at the, at the house, which is it's fast because it's my neighbor's Wi-Fi. Um, yeah, look, so look, he's got a little smile, look, right? He looks like happier, and then if you, you know, you can go a little further. There's a point at which he starts to look like the Joker, and you're like, okay, that, that's, that's too far. But there he goes. It, if you go much further, I think we're, we're in trouble. But what's interesting about it is it doesn't just move his, his teeth and his mouth. It actually kind of readjusts his face to work, because when you smile, it affects other parts of your, your face. So, uh, so anyway, I want to show you one more while we're here, but that's just how it works. And on the right picture, it, it's surprising how well it, it works. And, and it's not his teeth. He would probably realize, I don't know if he would, you don't see enough of the teeth to really go, hey, those aren't my teeth, you know. But, <laughs> but um, look, can I open that picture that we just opened a minute ago? I want to show you another one that actually works pretty well. It's, not, it's still in beta. But let's just open the same picture of the bride that we had open a minute ago. Oh, I didn't over open her over here, did I? Let me just open her again real quick just bring her over here. Actually, I want to, let me get rid of that uh, darkening because you'll see it better without it. There we go. Yeah, that darkening did a nice job there, didn't it? Now it just looks stupid. Let's go into the filter menu to neural filters. And the one we're going to use is called depth blur. It's one of the betas. It's going to be off, so you have to turn it on. And what it does is it actually does a very good job of simulating what real depth of field would be. Because if you have a very, very shallow depth of field, like if you're shooting a landscape or something, you would actually see the ground in front of you out of focus. Then it goes to really sharp in focus, and then it would go out of focus off in the background. Well, this does it pretty well here. Uh, it depends on the photo, but all you do is just turn on blur and then drag the blur strength uh, just over quite a bit. It's never, it never does enough. But you got to wait. You can, now, it's doing this. You don't have to be con connected to the Internet. This one's doing it on the device. But it kind of has to wait a second. Like, you're like, is it done? You think it's done? It's there we go. And what's nice about this is, if you've ever tried to put a Gaussian blur, it never looks right, right? You're right? You're like, you, look, you try it, and you're just, and then you try lens blur, which is the next best thing, and it never looks right. This is the one that I've seen that actually looks the closest because it's AI-based. I don't know how you know how they build AI stuff, but what they do is they take tremendous amount of images, maybe as many as a million, they feed it into a computer, and the computer runs for, I'm not joking, like six weeks. And then when it's done, you don't know when it's going to be done. It doesn't say, hey, I'm done Thursday at 2. It just runs. And then all of a sudden, it's done and says, here's the code. 
And like people that I've talked to that are into this stuff, they say, we don't really know how it wrote the code, but it works. So we, we put it in the program. So it's probably going to take over all of our jobs in our lives. So, but anyway, that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And this is the first one of anything I've used in a plugin or anything else where I think the results look pretty real. Let's just do, let me go to history and we'll do a before and after. And let's go to open. So there's before and there's after. And you notice it, it stair steps it back. It just doesn't, and that's one of the things with Gaussian Blur, it just throws it on there right at the, the focal plane instead of just, you know, and you could, yeah, you could put a gradient and try it. Eh. This is very easy. So keep an eye on the neural filters. They keep adding things there. Some of them are kind of dumb. I'll tell you what's really good um, is their uh, photo colorization. If you take an old black and white photo and put it in there, it's amazing how well it works. It's really amazing. In fact, if you'll give me one second, I happen to have a picture of myself from the 1980s. And I'm just going to go grab it real quick because, uh, hold on one second. Uh, it was a band picture, so I was in a band back then. And uh, it was called the Beatles. We were called the Beatles. <laughs> and uh, let me see if, oh, hold on. I, have, I, I know where I, the folder I put them in because I, I had to scan it. That's how old this photo is. So, you know, it was just taken like 15 years ago. Uh, hang on. Don't, don't laugh. It's, it's just, just mean. Uh, one second. Don't move. Don't breathe. Don't make a sound. And I think I have it. Oh, this is the right folder. Let me find the picture. I'm going to open it up. And what's amazing to me was when I did the colorization, like how it knew the color of my tie. I was a keyboard player, and you were, you were always issued a skinny tie as a keyboard player in the 1980s. <laughs> and it nailed the color. And I'm like, how would you even know that that was the, the color? Here, let me just, I, I'm in the right folder. I just, there's so many pictures of me as a child. Uh, and I, I don't know why. Uh, you know why? Can I tell you why? This is an important thing. Because my mom and dad made prints, and they stuck them in a shoebox. And you can say what you want about the shoebox thing. It works. Right? Those pictures taken of me when I was, I have pictures of me as a baby taken 31 years ago. <laughs> that, that I would not have if they hadn't. So that's why I always tell people to make prints, because like this is the visual history of your life. And it's so easy to find these later. Come on, I'm in the folder with them. And I can't find this one shot. It is driving me crazy because I know I'm in the right place. I might just have to grab this picture of me taken right here, well, in Atlantic City. That's close. We'll use this. Let me plug it back in here. It's taken in Atlantic City with my brother. We were on a, uh, a trip. This is when Atlantic City first legalized gambling. And so we were addicted to gambling. So we went straight there. Okay. Here we go, filter, neural filters, and go to colorize. Done. Now, it, it missed a little spot on my tie, right? But, you know, that would be pretty easy to fix. But that's the right color of the tie. That's the right color of the jacket. And my lips are a little redder than, than they should be. But outside of that, that's amazing, right? Here's what's worse. This was in Photoshop Elements first. It was in Elements like six years ago. And they finally said, should we put it in Photoshop? Would people have a use for it there? Boom. Yeah, we would. All right, so, that's the, so I just want to introduce you to those neural filters because they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty awesome. All right. And then we'll get rid of the Fabio here. All right, let me take a look at another picture here. Let's go uh, down a little further to right here. So we're going to do a little bit of a masking. And what we're going to do is, I'm going to do this in Lightroom. You can do it in Camera Raw again, exactly the same thing. We're going to once again use the radial tool and uh, the radial gradient. What I want to do is, I didn't, I didn't, it doesn't look like I put a, uh, a, a light on the background right behind her. It looks like there was maybe I put a light up in the corner because it's going from kind of bright to dark. But I wish I put a light behind her. So you can do that later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the radial mask tool, which I just grabbed, and we're going to grab it again. And I'm going to put a spotlight right over her face. And we're going to brighten it up. And we're done. It's not, a, not the best effect of the day. No, here's what we're going to do. We are going to go and just now we're going to say, all right, well, I added this mask, but I don't want it. And I don't want her. I don't want her lit. I want the background lit. All you have to do is go, all right, I want to subtract her. That's it. 
go to select subject, and it will cut her out of that circle in like two seconds. And then you can dial in a reasonable amount for the, for the thing. There you go. And you can also change the color if you want to gel your light. You know, you can gel it using the temperature and tint sliders. So it's just a really easy way to throw a background light, especially if you've done something like seamless or something. I do a lot of seamless or a lot of like painted backgrounds and stuff. And it's just easy to just drop that in there. So you put the mask on first and then you go subtract and you take out what you want, which in that case, case was her. All right, I do want to show you one thing. Let me reset her. I just want to show you something crazy. Let's go over to Photoshop, because this, this is going to be, a, this is a big, big thing, and it's, it's not very well known. So you probably know that you have select subject. You can choose any time, select subject, and it works pretty well. It selects her, right? So I could put her on her own background. Let's just press Command-J to put her on her own background, and then you can see it did a pretty good job. Not a killer job, but, but pretty good. To get the killer job, you only have to change one thing. And let me just get rid of that layer. So instead of just going under here and choosing Select Subject, you're going to change one thing. You're going to click on either any of these tools, like the Magic Wand, the Quick Select, any of those. You're going to click on that. And then up here, there's a button called Select Subject. It has been there forever. I mean, not forever. It's been there for three years. But what's new, and this just snuck in, like middle of the night, maybe a month ago, is the little down-facing triangle to the right of it, where you can choose to have it done in the cloud, and it does a night and day better difference. So as long as you're connected to the internet, you just hit Detailed Results, then click Select Subject. Give it a second, because it's got to go to the cloud. And it does a much, much better, more accurate version of whatever you're selecting. Look at them, it kept a lot more hair detail. It does whatever you're gonna do, it does it much better. S corners are smoother, everything's rounder. It just really does a tremendously better job. You just have to wait for a few extra seconds. So just to recap, for better results from select subject, don't go under the select menu. Go choose one of the select tools, like quick selection, magic wand, or the object, object selection tool. That's when that button appears, and that's when you can choose from the little pop down cloud detailed results. All right, uh, I'll give you another just a little quickie that, that I think helps to make. I use a lot of a gray seamless, and for those of you who saw my talk earlier, I talked about why, why seamless is such an awesome thing. So I do use a lot of seamless. I use gray because it's the easiest one to change to any other color, right? So, but it's also kind of bland. It's great if you're doing fashion, and it's kind of boring for other things. So what we're gonna do is this. I'm gonna go back to Lightroom real quick, and I'm going to steal a texture. And it's really easy because of the masking to add textures to your background. So I'm just going to copy and paste that texture onto here. And uh, now, if you change the blend mode, which is what you're going to do, you, there's only four blend modes that are really generally going to look good when you're pasting a texture over your subject. They're either multiply or screen. It's most likely going to be overlay or soft light. And overlay looks pretty good in this situation. But unfortunately, it gives her a terrible case of psoriasis. So. <laughs> Here's what you're going to do. This is the so easy when you think about it. We're going to go back to her layer. We're going to go choose Select Subject. Or if we want better results, we're going to click on the tool. We're going to go make sure that this is set to Cloud and hit Select Subject. And what it's going to do is it's going to select her, right? And her hair and everything else. And then we just go to the top layer. And if you're more advanced in Photoshop, you can add a layer mask. If not, just hit Delete. Now, the texture is completely behind her. So Photoshop took and put that selection in place. And when you switch to the top layer, it's, the selection stays there. So let's do it again real quick. Just, so I'm on her layer. I hit Select Subject, go to the top layer, and I'm knocking a hole out of the top layer with her selection. So now you can go to the background if you want, and you could lower the opacity to make it look better. You could provide, and a lot of times what I'll do is to make it look like there's a little more depth, I'll put a tiny Gaussian blur on the background, just like a, a one or two pixel. You don't want it to look really blurry, but just a little bit out of focus back there just to end it. Here, we'll try it again. Let me just grab a different texture here. And uh, it, 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 it's just an easy way to add interest into your, to your images. Let me go to Lightroom. We'll go over to this one. These are just, you know, these are walking around town, shoot a picture of a wall kind of textures. And uh, let me just paste it on top. 
switch the mode to overlay. So that's uh, step two is switch it to overlay. Go to her layer, hit select subject, go to the texture layer and hit delete. And now you can do all that stuff to the background. Uh, I would definitely lower the opacity level a little bit. By the way, the difference between overlay, which is like a contrast mode, and soft light is soft light is just more subtle. So if you, if you think it's a bit too much, just switch to soft light and it already settles it up for you. And then you can dial in the amount with opacity and then a little bit of blur and you're done. So it's just a quick little thing to make simple backgrounds look more interesting. All right, let's close those out. Now let's go on to the next thing. All right, this is a retouch, and uh, I cropped it closer. It's just a full-length shot, but when I was looking at this, I realized, we'll take it over to Photoshop and you'll see, I just happened to snap it at the wrong moment, so her eye wasn't fully open on this side. Her eye is normally fully open. It's not a, it's not, it's both eyes are open. But this is actually a surprisingly easy fix if you follow just a couple of simple rules. When we're doing retouches like this, the rule is, is there any other part I can use to fix this part? Is there a hand? Is there something I can use? In this case, she has one good eye and then the one that's kind of closed. So all you're going to do is get the lasso tool, which is the one that makes freeform selections. And you're going to just select this whole area of the eye. Just get the whole thing to start off with, just make it easy. And then you're going to pre uh, press Command J. That's just the nastiest looking thing. Hold on, let me do it a little smoother. There we go, it just looks terrible. There we go. And you can feather the edges if you want. It won't matter because we're going to erase most of them anyway. But if you want to soften the edges, you can. And then press Command J so the eye, you just have just it up on its own layer. Now, don't do this. <laughs> there's, there's no reason for this. It's, just, it's, it's mean. It's just mean. All right. Now, you could say, well, I'll just take this eye and put it over the other one. Wait, there, there's a couple of things we have to do. It looks stupid, I know, and it's going to look better. The first thing is, to get the eye alignment correct, if you lower the opacity of this eye, you can see the other eye below it, so you can go, oh, okay, so let's do that. Let's lower the opacity of this eye, and you can see where the other eye is. But, but right now, you have two right eyes. So what you're going to do is go to Free Transform, right? Commit, press Command-T on Mac or Control-T if you're on Windows. You're going to go to Free Transform, and you're going to flip the eye horizontally so it becomes a left eye. So that's what you're going to do. If you right click here on it, at the very bottom it says flip horizontal. You're going to flip it over and then you're going to rotate it into place. So at least now it is a left eye. And now is when we go and we lower the opacity. Let's zoom way in and see where the other eye was. You can pretty much get right in there on it. So it should be about right there it looks like. And then we raise the opacity back. Now, you're, you are catching some of the shadows and stuff from the other eye, so we want to clean those up. You're going to click the third icon at the bottom of the layers panel, which is the layer mask icon. And what that kind of does is gives you a get out of jail free card if you make a mistake. So you paint in black, and that will hide the, the, the other eye. It'll, anything that's left over, you're going to hide it. But if you make a mistake and you go, whoops, you can just switch to white and go, no, I meant to keep that part of the eye. You know, so you can go right in there. Oh, my opacity is very low, sorry. So you can go in here and we're going to paint this. There we go. Because you want to keep as much of the other eye as possible, just not the closed part. But if you make a mistake, all you have to do is switch from black to white, paint over your mistake, and it's fixed. So she's, is that better? Oh, yeah. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> New, all right. It's a little dark right in here. So let's just fix that. Now. There's one other weird thing. Does anybody know what it is? Can you see what it is? The catch light is from the other side. But, you know, who's going to know? No, you've got to fix the, you got to fix the catch light. So there's a couple different ways to do it. I'm going to flatten the image. One way to do it is to go over here, get the clone stamp tool. So we're making a copy. And option, hold the option key on Mac. It would be the alt key if you're on Windows. And click on that catch light and just put it over here. And then now she has... Oh, still the opacity thing, huh? Really? Sorry, these were set uh, from uh, earlier. There we go. Put another catch light in there, and now she has cat eyes. So, no, and then go and, and clone in the other part of the eye over that. And so at least now your catch lights are on the right side. So that's a very typical thing that we do 
when, when you're missing some body part or something's funky or whatever, you're going to take whatever other hand or whatever it is that's working, you're going to flip it horizontally. You're going to use the lowering the opacity to line it up, and at least that way you get to the... And so from, let's see where we were, and there's the eye was closed, and now you've got it open. So that's, and I'm not sure that I really angled that eye quite right, so you'd probably work on that a little bit. But that's just a, just a quickie on how to do that, because it is, that's, it's, it's a quickie. And I can tell by the silence how thrilled you are with that. <laughs> Let's move on. I'm gonna take a, a quick drink, because uh, I just need a quick drink. Okay, everyone, take one of your drinks now. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay, let's go, let's go here. So let's take a look at our bride. There's a couple of different issues here. Uh, uh, deep set eye sockets, which is very, very common. Um, we have some blemishes, those are easy enough to get rid of. Um, they did do a change here in the most recent Lightroom, and I'm sure Christy talked about it this morning, but they, they made the, um, the, I guess they call it the healing brush, better in Lightroom. It is better it's not, still not as good as the one in Lightroom, uh, in Photoshop. Photoshop's healing brush is fantastic. Lightroom's new erase brush is better. It's good. It's not, it's not, it's not as good. But it is better than it used to be. It's this little thing. Let's go ahead and just start really quick by taking out a few with just the, the most obvious blemishes. Um, you can change your brush side on your, uh, size on your keyboard by using the left and right bracket keys. So the left bracket key makes it smaller, the right bracket key makes it bigger, or you can use the size slider if you want. Um, I make it just slightly bigger than the blemish we want to remove. Just make it slightly bigger and just click once and it usually does a fairly good job. If it doesn't do a good job, you can hit the uh, uh, slash key on your keyboard and it will try someplace else. And let me just grab a couple more of these. I'm shrinking them down for smaller things. And there's just there's very little to do here, but let's just grab a couple of these up here just real quick. Now, so we're going to do this, what we're going to do here, all inside of Lightroom. So we don't have to go to Photoshop. You used to have to go to Photoshop for sure. We really don't. So this does actually a pretty good job. And again, if it, if it, if it, if it does, is that my phone? No. Is that your phone? That's okay. You can sell it. Um, <laughs> All right, so we have step one in is get rid of those. Now, to, to, uh, so you would ask yourself the question, does she need skin softening? No, right? She's young and, and, uh, and, and you don't really need that. However, what we're gonna do, we're gonna apply what we would call skin softening, but it does something so, so important. If you do it, uh, it, it smooths the gradations on the person's face. So that's what I'm doing it for. I'm not going to do it to, she doesn't need, uh, she doesn't have craggly skin. But the smoothing of the gradations really, really looks good. Now, there's fancy ways to do it in Photoshop. We're going to do the simple way to do it here. And that is this. Let's go and click on the uh, masking tool. We're going to go to the, uh, do you notice how a, a, a little circular picture of her showed up in the bottom right corner? That is, it's using facial content aware, I mean facial aware, to facial recognition to find her face. If you click on her face, it says, well, here's the things I can select. Her skin, face skin, body skin, eyebrows, eye sclera, the iris and pupil, her lips, or her hair. So we can do face skin. Now, just choosing it does not, the red area shows you what it's going to select. So that's what the red's saying, I'm going to select this. And then you hit create mask, and it still is going to be red, and that's how I would finish the photo. Um, <laughs> Which, so you know you're only affecting her face. There's just two little sliders you move now to just smooth the tones. And that is just go down here to the clarity slider and drag it to the left. And it just look at how it, the tones kind of smooth. And then you're going to add a little bit of sharpness so it doesn't look soft. You don't want to lose all her skin texture. Go up to plus 25. And so it just kind of lets you, and it's going to be different on everybody, but you want to get in there enough to where the skin looks smooth, but you're not, you're not trying to make the skin look smooth, you're trying to smooth the gradations between colors. And it really does make a phenomenal difference, you'll see in just a moment. All right, next you have the deep set eyes. That's a pretty easy one to fix. You can just go here and get the, go to create new mask, choose brush, and you can just paint over the whole, just ex increase the exposure. Usually it is about a third or so, and just paint over her sockets. 
And it might take more than just the exposure. You might have to go into the shadows a little bit because there's a lot of shadow area. Just be careful you don't get the raccoon looking stuff. <laughs> just kind of go a little bit there. And I don't know if you can tell, but do you notice she's got like bloodshot eyes? Yeah. Right? Because she had a lot of questions. Should I go through with this? Should I not? <laughs> so party let's go. Yeah. So it was like... And, you know, when they start asking the photographer, should I do this? We're always like, no. no. <laughs> All right. So now, let's, once, it, this is weird the way this works, but it's important for you to understand. The first time you go here and it finds the little person, right, is the only time you'll see it the first time. The second time, you have to go choose select people for it to actually show up again. It's weird, and it throws a lot of people. But just the first time you see the little thumbnail automatically, the second time you have to choose select people, and then the thumbnail appears. This time we're going to go to the eye sclera. This, and you have to hit create mask too. Once you do that, you can increase the, uh, this, the whites of her eyes a little bit. And this is the one that you have to be, of all the retouches, probably the most careful. Because this is the thing that I see overdone the most. People will do the eyes to 100%. And they look like aliens. And you're like, wow, that's, it, it trashed it. Uh, but you can see the red, like the, the bloodshotness in her eyes. I just go down here to the uh, saturation and just lower. It's the whites, right? They shouldn't be any other color. That takes the redness out of her eyes. I think we're pretty close to, to being OK now. Let's just do a before and after uh, side by side. Now that I see it, I think the skin softening might be a little bit much, but that's okay, right? You can lower the, lower the clarity amount to, to dial it in where you want. But, but look at the, the gradations in the skin, or uh, you fix the socket and all that. I mean, it's pretty easy stuff. The masking stuff is just so good. It's just so good anymore. You know, and, and I know a lot of photographers kind of feel sometimes that this is like it's taking my job. And what I would say is it's doing the stuff you didn't want to do anyway. Nobody goes, man, I had the greatest time last night selecting the scaleras in someone's eye. It was just a blast. We had a scalera party. Like, nobody wants to do that. What you want to do is the creative part. How bright do I make them? Should I you know, take out the reds? What looks appropriate? Where you're doing the artistic and the judging part of it, not the taking the lasso tool and getting in there as tight as you can. And a lot of Lightroom stuff was kind of, of big and blocky. Like, it was hard to get little areas. So this, I think this stuff is phenomenal. And, and I use it all day, every day. I really think it's wonderful. By the way, to see the split screen view like that in Lightroom, just press the letter Y. And it gives you a split side by side and press Y again and it goes back to regular. All right, let's move on. Let's go look here. This whole next thing was one of the first things where I really felt like the AI stuff was, was catching up. Let's go over here to Photoshop for this one because it only lives in Photoshop. It is the miracle that is the liquify filter. So I'm under the filter menu. You could see it. I don't want to get into it. Anybody? I don't want to be, get anybody fired. But <laughs> too late. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go up. Oh, it's no, it's absolutely not their fault. Uh, we're right here. Liquify. Now, I, I want to explain what. So, Liquify has been in Photoshop for many, many, many years. But this this thing we're gonna work on here is rather new. Now. I'll talk about what the thing that we did in Liquify for years was, which was using this brush up here in the corner called the Forward Warp Tool. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. But what I want to focus on now is this thing called Face Aware Liquify. This thing is, is just a miracle. So what it does is it looks at the face. It uses uh, facial recognition is the word I'm looking for. It uses facial recognition, and it takes all the parts of the face and assigns them to a slider. So for example, if I wanted to make her Face thinner, I can go to face width, drag it to the left. Want to enhance the jawline, drag it to the left. And, but what you notice about it is how smart it is when it does it. It's so smart because it's moving all of the parts of the face that you need done. If you want to adjust the lower lip, make it bigger or smaller, the upper lip, uh, the smile. You can have her be very disappointed or bigger smile. Uh, in this case, her, her smile's fine. I, he, we don't need to adjust her nose, but I'm just going to show you. You can make her nose smaller. You can choose the, the nose height if you want her to be more arrogant. Um, <laughs> then uh, you also have all of the eye sizes, eye height, all of this different stuff that you can control just using these sliders. And there's a little preview button at the bottom so you can see just what moving those sliders did. It really, it, it, and it does it 
realistically with softness and feathering so it's not you're not seeing hard edges and it re it's they've really thought it out quite well so let me let me show you a couple others let me just open up a different image here i just wanted to grab one here um, how about here so this one will allow me to show you the other thing that we do a lot which is we use the forward warp tool so go under here to liquefy and uh, she could use the smile thing i think oh, right off the bat Come on, it's not so bad, there you go, okay. So the best way I can describe the forward warp tool is it moves your subject around like they're made of a thick molasses, like a liquid. But there are two secrets to making this tool work for you. Secret number one is make your brush a little bigger than the thing that you want to move. That's really important. And number two is it's not a paintbrush, just nudge it. Just kind of nudge like move this way. So like her hair line is kind of messed up, right? So you could go in here and just kind of nudge it out. And as long as your, your brush size is about right and you don't mind nudging it, so here I need to move this whole area. Watch, I'll make it bigger. And just kind of move this whole, oh, bigger yet. Move that whole area up. And when you get to a dent like that, that's when you have to get the brush small and move it up. So you can kind of go through this whole thing quickly and just kind of straighten this out. Little lump there. That looks kind of funky. I don't know what's going on here. Let's just move that up a bit. And then we're going to scrunch these down a bit. I'm doing this kind of quickly. You'll take more time, I'm sure, that when, when you do it. Uh, but even just 30 seconds on here is, is making a difference. Watch. Right, just 30 seconds really is making a difference. Now, it looks like to me this whole side needs to come up a bit. So get your brush nice and big and pull up the whole side. But do you see why, why it's so important to get the brush the right size? It really makes, a, and, and it doesn't take long for you to start to see that, right? And then maybe down here, I noticed uh, you might want to fix this part of her, her dress. They would usually pin that, right? They'd get pinned back in the studio, not in real life, but in the studio. And maybe that little dent there, okay? Now, that dent didn't move. Notice how it moved too much? Get your brush small, and now you can move just that little piece. There you go. Anything on the other side? I don't know what's going on there. So um, I, I may, yeah, yeah, okay. But I, yeah, I'm going to go with that. Now, that's not bad. Watch the preview. I mean, we spent, a, what, a minute on this? But it makes, oh, the smile looks pretty good, actually, doesn't it? Because she was looking like, please let this shoot end. And now she's like, I got five more minutes. All right. Then when you, then you've, you've got some dropouts in her hair. There's a couple of different ways to deal with this. Uh, one of them is to just use content-aware fill, right? That's where uh, instead of filling with white or filling with black or something, you select what you want to go away, and then it tries to make an intelligent fill. It doesn't always do it. You just have to go to the fill dialog, hit OK, wait for a second, and yep, there's the second ear. <laughs> so, the third ear, I'm sorry, yeah, there's the third ear. So you might instead just go up here with the clone stamp tool using all the regular old settings and just clone that out. But my preferred method is not to actually do that, is to actually pick up other hair, like grab this hair over here. All right, grab as much of it as you can. Whoops, all the way to the edge. Feather it so the edges are soft. If you don't feather when you're copying and moving stuff, you will see a hard edge. Right, so feathering just softens the edge a little bit. And my, my kind of default go-to is 10. So I'll just feather and hit 10. All right, and then you're going to put that up on its own layer. So the keyboard shortcut is Command-J on Mac or Control-J on PC. See how soft the edges are? That's the feathering. So then you can just literally move that over. And you, and you well, let me get to the Move tool, sorry. And then you know that the texture is going to match and all that stuff. Now you see I have to do it a couple times to fill that in. But that's how I would fill those in. You're better off to actually use big chunks of hair than you are to just trying to clone it so you don't pick up repeating patterns and stuff. But that's just a quickie on the other uses of that tool. Let me grab uh, one or two more images here. This one uh, is, a, is a, a fix that I wind up having to do more often than you would think. It's in uh, the liquify, and it is the eye distance. So you just move it just like that. Just move it over a little bit. And it's a quick fix, what, 15 seconds? But it makes a difference. Yeah, it's just, but it's those little things, right? And, and you know, I, I was photographing her for, I don't know, a couple hours. It was for a class for, for beginner photographers and all. 
I never looked at the photo and thought her eyes are too far. I never looked at her and thought her eyes are, but you opened up the photo was the first thing I saw. So it's an easy fix to make her look like she did when, she was, when I was standing there. Uh, next is this shot. So let's, we, have, we have a couple of different issues here. First, let's go ahead and get rid of the, the first part of the teeth issue. So her teeth are a little yellowing and they're not as bright as maybe we would like them to be. It's easy to fix. Go over here and choose the masking tool. Wait for it to draw her face down the bottom. Click. And if a person is smiling, it adds this, the setting for teeth. It only appears if the AI sees the teeth. So now I can just go say mask the teeth. Click create mask. And then you just go and either lower the saturation so you don't see the yellowing. Yep, yellowing's gone. And then I would just go to exposure and brighten up the teeth a little bit. Just, it's a 15 second, 30 second kind of thing, but it makes a difference. I do it to everybody's teeth that I see smiling. Almost everybody's got some yellowing, you know, a little bit of yellowing. Take the yellow, lower the saturation to get rid of the yellowing, brighten the teeth a little bit, and then we're gonna go over to Photoshop and do dental surgery. <laughs> Let's go in tight. We're gonna go to liquify. There we go. We're gonna get a very small brush, really, really small. I'm using the left key. I want to pull this down a little bit. You just, when you have the right size brush, everything just falls into place. We're going to do this over here, get that one. And then if you feel like the, maybe the front teeth are a little too forward, you can just pull them back just a little bit. And it helps if you make that sound. <laughs> and, and what do we spend? 10, 15 seconds? It just fixes them up a little bit. Now, I'm not going to do this to the bridesmaids and people in the back row, right? This is going to be when you're, you know, when it matters and someone's up close. But if you want to see the difference between, uh, like, a, it's a two-minute retouch from there uh, to here, and then we also fix the yellowing and all that stuff, which you'll see back in Lightroom. We can close this now, but you'll see back in Lightroom. All right, let me see how we're doing on time. I think we're, I think we have seven minutes plus the eight minutes that we're run over. So I feel like we have 15 minutes. <laughs> but I, I don't. I, is there another instructor on after this class? Is there somebody else? Yeah, All right, call them and tell them not to come. <laughs> no, it's OK. It's OK. I will end on time. I won't do anything else with the darn, but I'm ending on time. All right. Uh, oh, by the way, I just want to show you this. I thought this was kind of interesting. So. I've had a lot of people ask me, okay, when you go to liquify and face aware, right, and you go to liquify, what happens if you have more than one person in the photo? Look at this, face one, face two, and face three. Now, I can never figure out which face is which, so I go to face number two, and I move their smile. Yep, it's her, <laughs> all right. And then you can start your retouch. All right. So this next one is, I'm, I'm, is kind of weird, but I want to tell you about it first. This is a thing that you and I are going to kind of look at as a little bit corny. But can I tell you, when you send this to a client, it absolutely delights them. They are so excited about it. They think it's the coolest thing in the world. And it's one of those weird things hidden inside of Photoshop. But the reason you haven't used the thing I'm about to show you is, if you opened it and with its default settings, you would not be able to hit cancel fast enough. It's the stupidest looking thing with its default settings, but you can change a setting and it's actually okay. So let's, see, let's take this photo over to Photoshop and this will all make more sense in just a second. Let's just, I'm gonna select all and copy so we're using her in memory and we'll just go to a clipboard and create a new empty document. All right, so what you're gonna do, and this is gonna lo all look and sound stupid till the very end. I'm going to add a new layer, so we have an empty blank layer. We're going to go use a filter you've never used under the filter menu. Oh, we're losing one. And then we'll be giving out the free $100 gift <laughs> certificates to B&H. Everyone gets one. Didn't work. Look, if you can't get them with a free $100 gift certificate, you're really bombing. <laughs> It's going down, it's like you bring this filter out, people run for the doors. I'm surprised we only lost one. Here we go. We're going to go under the render menu to ready, picture frame. You're like, what? I know, it's stupid because when you bring it up, it usually puts like a frame of flowers and you're like, when am I going to use that? But so there is actually a decent one in here. If you go down to the bottom where no one's ever been, 
There's a thing, and even the even the even this looks stupid. It all looks bad at first. So you're going to choose art frame. Now they have rounded frames and other stupid ones. The only one that's worth the darn is number 42, art frame. When you click it, it's going to make it in the size of, of whatever your document. Remember I copied her into memory? I hit select all and copied her. So it makes the frame kind of her size. But what I'm going to do is it's too big, so we're going to make it little. And it, it looks dumb, but it's going to get better. So one of the things that's going to make it better is this. We're going to create a new layer, a new blank layer, and I'm going to drag it behind the frame. We're going to fill this with white. So you're just going to draw a big rectangle in somewhere like, you know, bigger than the, the opening of the frame. And you're going to make it white. So you're going to press Option Delete on Mac. It would be Alt Backspace on a Windows PC. And now you have just basically, here's what we have. A white background, a white rectangle, and the frame on top. Go to the white rectangle thing, and we're going to go to this little FX menu at the bottom, and you're going to choose uh, Outer Glow, and you're going to make your glow black. Oh, wait, we skipped a step. Sorry, sorry. The step we skipped was you have to cut a hole in this, because this is going to be your mat. You're going to cut a hole in this where you want your mat to be. So I'm just kind of eyeing this, but let's just say that it's there. Actually, that's not a great mat. Let me go make it bigger. Uh, that's that's kind of, that's, that's going to have to do. And just hit delete. So now you've got that, a hole in your mat, right? Just like a real mat. Now, you're going to go to outer glow, and you're going to set your glow color to black. And it makes a mat. Here, let me zoom in because it did not get the response I was expecting. <laughs> See? It makes a mat. Hey. <laughs> All right, hey guys, edit that for the YouTube version. Just cut it right there where they go, ooh, okay. So now all you have to do to finish this off is, is you already have the bride in memory, right? Just uh, go to this uh, layer, pop her in here, and you wanna make sure that when she shows up here, she goes behind the mat, right? Because it would look stupid for her to be in front of the mat. So let's go over to the layers palette and put her behind the mat. And you have this basically instantly matted picture. Let me get it to fit more correctly. And, and, the, and so the frame to me still looks a little cheesy. So the last step is what kind of makes the frame. I just uh, hold the command key on Mac or the control key on Windows and I click on that frame layer. And then I add a new layer and fill the new layer with black. And then I just lower the opacity so a little bit of the frame shows through. And it looks a lot better. Now, if you put this on social media or you send it to somebody else that is not a photographer, they call you back immediately and they just love it and they're going crazy about it. If you send it to another photographer, they're like, dude. <laughs> so this not a, don't send it to your photography friends, but if you send it to a client, they just they are delighted with it. How did you get it in? Did you so did you buy a frame and like <laughs> Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> I bought a frame and I I I cut the mat myself. I swear, I promise. I cut the mat myself with a selection. You say that part quietly? And then it's done. So it's just a very simple thing. It lives there in Photoshop, and it, it'll make any size you want and all that stuff. You can control all that stuff. But anyway, it's kind of an unusual and neat stuff. Now, this class technically is supposed to end in one minute, but is it? No. No, no that's not going to happen. Because <laughs> I, I believe I have an extra nine more minutes. I don't know if I'm going to go quite that far, because we do have another instructor. Is the other instructor here? Five minutes? You're giving me, I got an official five. All right. Okay, here we go. Let's take a look at this image. Oh, well, you can do this in Lightroom or in Photoshop. Either way, we'll do it in Photoshop. So a characteristic of this subject is that she has a mole right there. If I remove that mole, everyone that knows her is going to know this photo was retouched. But that mole stands out tremendously more than it would if you were standing in front of her. In fact, I didn't realize she had a mole until we literally did the shoot, right? So here's what we're going to do. Go get the healing brush tool, the spot healing brush, make your brush a little bigger than it, and click it, and it's completely gone. Here's the last thing you step. Go into the edit menu and choose fade spot healing brush. This is undo on a slider. So you can just go, wait a minute, let's bring some back. There we go, right about there. That way it's there, but it's faded back to where it would be if you were standing in front of the person. You can do the same exact thing inside of Lightroom. Take the healing brush, remove it, but instead of uh, going under the edit menu and choose heal because it's not there, just lower the opacity. It works exactly the same way. So if you're just a Lightroom person, 
and you don't, have, you don't have to go to Photoshop for that. All right, we're down. That's, uh, by the way, I do the same thing here for dealing with wrinkles. All right, with wrinkles, what do you do? Duplicate the layer. I prefer to do this one in Photoshop, here's why. Get rid of all his wrinkles, every wrinkle he has, and you don't have to be very good at this. So it, even if it's a little sloppy, it doesn't matter. So let's go and get this wrinkle and get this wrinkle. Wow, this is sloppy, all right, but I'm, I got, I'm on a time limit. This pressure is ridiculous. Uh, here, 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 there. Uh, all of these got to go. And I know I'm not doing a great job, but it's really, you're going to see why it doesn't matter in a minute because I just don't care about this subject. No, that's not it. Get rid of all the wrinkles. Come on, there's a couple left here. Let's just get rid of these. Oh, and these, those are wrinkles, right? All right, you get him back to where he looks 14, right? Now, what's our goal with the retouch? Is it remove the wrinkles or reduce the wrinkles? We're trying to make, exactly, we're trying to make the, 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 the shadows look less. So all you do is, this is now your undo on a slider, the opacity slider for a layer. You can bring it back and you can make him 10 years younger by not going to zero. You go to zero, they're all back. You go to 100, they're all gone. Somewhere in between, it still looks like him. They're still there, but they're much, much, much less intense. Uh, less uh, intense, sorry. All right, and uh, we can do the same thing with hot spots. I'm not going to show it, but you circle the hot spot, remove the whole thing, bring back the slider for the same exact way. Now, real quickly, you got to do these two. All right, this is something I do in studio. Uh, we are, are we're, or on location. So we have our bride here, and here's the, what? here's the actual shot. So you can see my softbox, giant softbox there in there. And I told her, we're going to move the softbox, just stand there. So we have two shots, one with no softbox, one with softbox. Here's what you're going to do. Select both of them. Go over here to Photoshop. You're going to copy and paste the one uh, with the, uh, well, you can need, it doesn't matter which one you paste on top. Let's do the one with no lights on top. And are they pretty well lined up? Yeah. All right. Here's what you're going to do. You are going to put a layer mask, you're going to hold the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows and click the layer mask icon and that's going to hide the version of, of the, the layer without the lights. The one I took where, we, where I told my assistant, can you move the light out of the way? And then what you do is you go in with a paintbrush and you paint the light away. And so you get to have the beautiful light on her, you paint everything else away, and then you can also control the spill on the floor, get a bigger brush, control the spill on the floor and on the pews and all that stuff to where it looks like a magical light from heaven came and fell right upon her. All right, now, one last thing I would do here, and I did when I did this shot, was this. I would get the uh, polygonal lasso tool or the polygonal lasso tool if you're kind of stuck up. And let's get these crosses over here. Oh, uh, bigger, go big, right there. Let's feather them to death, right, 10 pixels. We're going to put them up on their own layer so you just have that and then flip it horizontally because do you want to see that stupid screen? No. Do you think the bride wants to see that stupid screen? Nobody wants to see that stupid screen. Then you hide the, uh, you add a layer mask and then you can hide all the edges by painting with a black brush. Well, if you paint too big, you see the screen again. So you just want to paint on the edges so you don't see them. You want to do a better job than I'm doing because you know. All right, let me ask Michael. Michael, how much time do we have left? One more tip? Yes, let's go. All right. Now, you can do that same trick that I just did with reflections and glasses. The key is you cannot have your subject take the glasses off. Somebody else has to do it for them. They have, you have them take the picture and say, my assistant's going to come and take the glasses off. You take the second shot. Because then you have a picture of her without the glasses. You paint the glare with her eyes right over it. You use the exact same technique you just saw. Just pretend that it's not light. It's glasses instead. And do I have time for one more? Yes. This is, the, <laughs> this is the number one most requested retouch where a client actually walks up to me and says, can you please do this thing? They're like, can you make me, and they always whisper it, can you make me look a little thinner? Right? It's the easiest thing to do in Photoshop or Lightroom. All you do is you go to Ready, Lens Corrections, of course. Uh, actually, it's the one right below it. Go to Transform, and there's the thing called Aspect, all right? And drag it to the right. And then you're going to hit the uh, constrained crop tool. Look at the difference. It does a great job. It'll make you more money than all the rest of the stuff you just learned combined. 
Thank you, everybody. Thanks very much. Thanks.